This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 22nd of March in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. A police operation in Wisrock Linden has left one man dead and another injured. The dead man has been identified as Randy Jerome, 33 years old. Jerome's associate, Ronaldo Chapman, was reportedly injured during the incident. He is currently receiving treatment at the Linden Hospital on the police card. The Region 10 Divisional Police Commander Hugh Winter, when contacted by news source, would only confirm that the police carried out an operation at Wisma Linden. He refused to divulge information and details of that operation or the shooting incident. News source understands that it was just after 1 o'clock this afternoon that police ranks moved in at a building in Wills Rock where four men were spotted. It is reported that the men were wanted for questioning in connection with a number of armed robberies. In a statement, the Ghana police force said the men opened fire on the ranks at the house. Relatives of at least one of the men have since disputed that account and claims that it was the police who opened fire on the men. The police said its investigations have since recovered two guns, a quantity of marijuana and a quantity of ammunition at the house where the shooting took place. A full investigation is underway tonight. More news coming up in a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. At Giftland Office Max, we're all about customer satisfaction. Whether it's clothing and shoes for the ladies, gents, and kids, or for the latest electronics or hardware appliance, we're always thinking of satisfying you, our dear customers. Now you can shop online at www.giftlandofficemax.com or visit us at the Giftland Mall, where we're happy to serve each and every one of you. At the most critical life-changing moments, the National Insurance Scheme is here to ensure that your needs are covered. Access reimbursement for medical expenses for various aspects of your medical care. We know that eye care is of utmost importance. Receive assistance with our spectacle care voucher. Visiting the dentist? Dental care is also covered under our sickness benefit services. Offset the funeral expenses of a loved one with costs covered by our funeral benefits. National Insurance Scheme. We're there every step of the way. Bust the flavor, flavor. flavors. We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors. Bust the flavors that my craver. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors. Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors. Yeah. Thirst Busta, grab a Busta Busta flavor, taste the savor Busta, Busta flavor, flavors Busta, Busta flavor, flavors Strong and solid, in countries far and wide you in your assurance, we're standing by your side. Golden service, half a century and more. You in your assurance, our policies are secure. From the heart of India, we serve this island. The strength that you can trust, you're safe when you come to us. New India Assurance Company. Assurance when you need it most. For your home, motor, or business insurance, visit New India Guyana office, 58 Brick Dam, next to Star Computers. Telephone 2260 Comfortable parking available. 
A young mother's greatest fears have shattered her life and have now become the reality she is facing. Seven-month-old Oriah Gray Zandi died yesterday after suffocating at the Little Learners Daycare Center in Ogle. While fighting back tears in a social media video, the child's mother, Shivani Gray Zandi, said all was well when she dropped the daughter off at the daycare center on Tuesday morning. She said her daughter was a healthy baby with no complaints and was smiling and laughing as usual. The mother said she was later contacted on Tuesday afternoon by a caregiver at the daycare center who reported that the child was having breathing issues. By that time, the child had already been rushed to the George Young Hospital by ambulance, where doctors pronounced her dead on arrival. The mother said she the daycare this morning. Okay, everything all right. I got called that she was unresponsible. She had to go in the daycare. Why she go to daycare? The ambulance picture. I'm bringing her here unresponsible, dead on arrival. So I know, and I come on here with sheep and know that the last will last. So what I know. How old was the baby? Maybe seven months. Seven months old. This man left everything good, no problem. She just left normal, smiling, everything okay. I was made to understand her more than my daughter. More than my daughter. She fall on the side of the bed of the daycare and she wrap up between the sheets and some kids. So by the time they're gonna call me to come down, she 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 arrive at the uh, the um in the at the, at the health center unresponsive. By the time they could bring her to the hospital, she was pronounced dead on, on arrival due to the suffocation. Officials at the daycare center were being questioned by the police late Tuesday and related that a child was noticed panting for breath and measures were immediately taken to seek help. However, the mother related that she was told that her seven-month-old daughter was not being supervised when she might have gotten wrapped up in a sheet after rolling off a bed, eventually suffocating. The mother and father said they have been left heartbroken by the loss of their beautiful baby girl and they want a full investigation into the incident. A post-mortem examination was conducted today on the body of the child and that post-mortem examination revealed that the child died from suffocation and from compression to the neck. Hemorrhage to the head and what the word again? Suffocation to the neck. You know what I mean? So therefore the baby fall off our bed on the right side and the baby was strong so on the wrong neck strongly suffocated. I can think of a breath and you guys ever talk back to the people at the daycare Well, no, we're going to make a report, so that's much the information I get. Then car, you know, thing. The go to the the go to the um, health center with and the mother and father complained that they were not immediately contacted by the daycare center when the incident took place. Police investigators are now probing the death. The lifeless body of an 88-year-old woman was found this morning wrapped up in an old sheet and dumped in an empty lot in Russell Street, Charlestown, here in Georgetown. The dead woman has since been identified as Patsy Boville. She lived just opposite the empty lot where her body was found. Police investigators spent several hours at the scene this morning and into early afternoon following the discovery. Tight-lipped crime scene investigators were seen traversing between the site where the body was found and the woman's home across the road. Persons in the area said the woman had not been seen for several days. It was a concerned relative who visited the home and decided to contact the police after seeing no trace of the elderly woman. A grandson of the elderly woman who lived with her told investigators initially that he had taken her to the hospital. However, investigators doubted that story and decided to look around the area this morning. It was during their search of the empty lot that a woman's bloodied body was spotted in a sheet. The grandson, who is believed to be in his 30s, has since been taken into custody for questioning. Investigations are ongoing. In the courts now, the 20-year-old mother of three who was arrested this past weekend following the stabbing death of her reputed husband was charged today for manslaughter. She was granted bail in the sum of $300,000. The young woman, Alian Lewis, appeared before the chief magistrate this morning, where the manslaughter charge was read to her. She is accused of stabbing 23-year-old Ethan Hamilton to death at the couple's Albertown home on Saturday. She was represented by attorneys Darren Wade, Suzanne Bullen and Trevon Weeks.
The police reported earlier this week that a couple was at their home when an aunt saw a 23-year-old man clutching his abdomen with blood oozing as he complained that he had been stabbed by his reputed wife. He collapsed and was taken to the hospital where he died. The young woman was reportedly seen a short while after exiting the same room with a knife in her hand. The young woman was arrested for the crime. She had filed a number of police complaints against the man for assaulting her, and the matter is currently before the courts. Investigators were told that she was being attacked and beaten by the reputed husband when she retaliated on Saturday by stabbing him. You taste the cheese, you hear the crunch. Grab a zoomers and zoom into fun. And with the first years, you feel like you know what it done. Blast off to a whole new place with every single bite. The cheesy goodness bring your taste buds alive. So let's just zoom into fun with this wheel shaped light. Zoomers, zoomers, zoom into fun. fun, fun. into the future with the next generation eco-friendly axiom installed elevators and escalators call us today on telephone number 619-0899 or 6048-0934 email us at axiomliftsgy at gmail.com for affordable elevators escalators moving walks industrial lifts home solutions modernization repair and servicing axiom elevator services Technology for people on the move. Several residents of Grove on the east bank of the Marara have been left counting their losses following a major breach last evening of the river defense, which sent floodwaters rushing into their homes. While the cause of that breach is still to be determined, the authorities are looking at the work that was being done by a contractor close to the area where the breach was found. It was late yesterday afternoon that persons in the Grove area noticed that the river water was rushing into their yards and homes. Suddenly, investigations revealed the breach in the river defense. Last evening, some residents who were faced with several inches of water in their homes were moved to a shelter facility as the authorities assessed the situation. Public Works Minister Juan Edgel was at the scene and he described the situation as traumatizing. I received calls from residents about flooding taking place in the area. I was in Linden at that time. So I contacted my CN River Defense Department, who immediately responded. We have an active contract that is working on the sea defenses in close proximity to where the breaches occur. That contractor, <laughs> along with other emergency response contractors, were and are mobilized to deal with the current flooding. Since this is the media that I'm speaking to, and this will go public, I have to say as Minister of Public Works, I'm deeply traumatized by what I see, the damages and the effects of the suffering of the people here in Grove. Emergency crews spent all night at the scene working to seal the breach. Prime Minister Mark Phillips also visited the area. He expressed his worry about what took place. 
a full investigation is being carried out into that incident. Meanwhile, many of the affected residents are already calling for full compensation for the damages to their property and their belongings. Well, the process of appointing a new Deputy Chief Elections Officer appears to be at a standstill once again. The members of the Commission met on Tuesday, but no date was set for the conduct of interviews with the shortlisted applicants. It is more than 17 months now since the Elections Commission, which is chaired by retired Judge Claudette Singh, advertised the post. Although the applicants have long been shortlisted, there has been no appointment. Opposition-nominated GCOM Commissioner Vincent Alexander said the situation is worrying, especially with local elections approaching. He said the sloth is still in the arena, and now that they have arrived at the listing of the persons to be interviewed, they still haven't gotten a date because some commissioners are unavailable. He warned that the failure to appoint a deputy chief election officer ahead of the 12th of June local government elections could affect the successful execution of those elections. Mr. Alexander explained that a DCEO has specific functions, and if there is no DCEO in place, it means that somebody else has to carry out those functions. And in this instance, it is resulting in what may be seen as an overload on the chief elections officer. And with that overload, you are not getting efficiency and effectiveness, Mr. Alexander said. The Elections Commissioner said evidence of the overload was documented in a letter to the Chairman of the Elections Commission by the Chief Elections Officer Vishnu Pasad when he sought to justify the need for a Director of Operations. In that letter, the Chief Elections Officer explained that a senior officer was needed to assist with the day-to-day -day implementation and evaluation of the statutory and administrative tasks outlined in the work plan for the conduct of local elections. In the absence of a DCEO, the Commission's IT manager, Anil Giddings, was seconded to the post of Director of Operations. However, that appointment was rescinded in February, after it was deemed to be unlawful. Commissioner Alexander said with his chief election officer having to carry the majority of the workload, the impact is undoubtedly being felt. Initially, Melanie Marshall, Neil Backus, Mohamed Arjun and Deodat Passan were shortlisted for the position by the Commission. However, Anil Gittins was added to the shortlist after the post was re-advertised. The last deputy chief election officer was Roxanne Myers. Her services were terminated in August 2021. She is currently before the courts facing a number of fraud charges related to the elections. She has repeatedly declared her innocence of those charges. Arguments in the election petition appeal case wrapped up today as the attorney for the appellant, Senior Counsel Royce Dill Ford, told the court that the Parliament of Guyana is the only institution vested with the power by the Constitution to modify the country's electoral laws. He was making the case against a recount order that led to an outcome of the last elections. In 2020, the Ghana Elections Commission brought Order 60 into effect to facilitate a national recount of the votes cast at the 2nd of March elections, and in so doing, the Commission relied on the electoral laws of the country. But today, Mr. Ford told the appellate court that Section 22 of the Election Laws Amendment Act conflicts with the Constitution and is therefore unconstitutional. He submitted that the conferral of such power in GCOM, the power to issue orders to modify electoral laws, where in the opinion of GCOM, there is a difficulty in the application of electoral laws constitute an abdication of part or portion of the constitutional authority conferred on the Parliament of Guyana by the Constitution to pass laws in accordance with the electoral system. He told the panel of judges led by the acting chancellor that it is the function and responsibility of the parliament to formulate legislative policy and not the elections commission. At the level of the High Court, the election petition filed by Claudette Thorne and Heston Bostwick was dismissed by the Acting Chief Justice Roxanne George on the grounds that there was nothing unconstitutional about Section 22 of the Election Laws Amendment Act and or Order 60. But Mr. Ford, who appeared together with attorney at law Selwyn Peters for the applicants, told the appeal court that Section 22 constitutes an unconstitutional divestment of a plenary legislative power vested in Parliament. He said as such, the conferral of the plenary legislative power on the Elections Commission is unconstitutional. Ford also argued that Article 163A4 is not an ordinary plenary legislative power, but a constitutional one. He also told the court that Section 22, therefore, encrouches upon the Constitution. 
He said that section 22 and order 6 by their aptitude of power contravened the doctrine of the separation of powers inherent in the constitution of Guyana. It was based on the results of that recount that President Irfan Ali was declared the winner and elected to office. The APNU AFC is seeking to nullify the entire elections on the basis of that recount. But it was the president at the time, David Granger, of the same APNU AFC, who agreed to a recount along with the then opposition leader, Barra Jack Deer. In earlier submissions, Senior Counsel Douglas Mendez, who is representing the Vice President and Attorney General Anand Lau, urged the Court of Appeal to dismiss the case, as they rubbish the arguments made by Senior Counsel Ford. The Court will hand down its decision on a date to be announced later. The 2013 Miss Jam Zone Queen Alicia Bess Anderson is making her return to the stage, this time in St. Martin, where she's expected to be the first Guyanese to compete in the annual Miss International Elegant Mother's Pageant in May. Through her platform, Moms Can, the mother, wife, and certified human resource practitioner with a Masters in Business Administration, intends to bring to the forefront the issues facing women and girls, even as she shares their success stories. The pageant has a few segments, but one that's very dear to me would have to be our platform in terms of the prejudging elements of us showcasing a positive side of motherhood as well as maybe a pressing issue. Because I know as mothers we go through a lot of stuff from postpartum depression, from body positivity and just battling so much more. She said the pageant which will bring together mothers from across the region will see the delegates celebrating motherhood. So I believe that this is a positive platform for us as mothers to really be able to showcase ourselves, showcase our growth as well as network and connect with each other because the pageant is all about a celebration of motherhood. No stranger to the pageantry, Bess Anderson has participated in several local, regional and international pageants over the years, copying several prizes and crowns. True pageantry has really helped me to evolve as a young woman. It's really helped me the element of public speaking, exuding confidence, and just embracing a side of you that you never know. I always tell person I was a tomboy before entering pageants, and now I'm a lady gracefully gracing the stage. <laughs> The supermodel has been in pageantry since 2010. She's urging Guyanese to like her photo and promotional video on her Facebook pages, Alicia Bess or Alicia Bess Anderson, and share those pages. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new bus, the soda water, zero calories, zero sugar, zero artificial flavors, 100% refreshing. Taste bus, the soda water today. Bus, the soda water. Now available for only $120. Oil Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline.
Across the region tonight, Venezuela's ruling party-controlled National Assembly has unanimously revoked a legislator's immunity from prosecution amid a widespread corruption scandal. The lawmaker Hug Belroa and former higher education minister can now be indicted for flagrant crimes of corruption. The assembly did not give details about the case that Roa is allegedly implicated in, but he's known as a close ally of long-standing official Tarek El Asami. El Asami resigned as the oil minister on Monday following the detention of some 20 officials amid a corruption probe focused on state-run oil company Pedvasa. Removing immunity is required to try cases involving legislators within the ordinary justice system instead of in the Supreme Court. The government of the Bahamas says it has joined a brief filed by Mexico in the U.S. Court of Appeal in the First Circuit in support of a $10 billion U.S. dollar suit to hold U.S. gun manufacturers liable for the harm caused by their products. The Bahamas has been joined by Antigua and Barbuda, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the Latin American and Caribbean Network for Human Security, a network of non-governmental organizations and affiliated professionals specializing in international humanitarian law. The named defendants in the 10 billion US dollar suit include seven major gun manufacturers and one gun wholesaler and distributor. The office of the Prime Minister in the Bahamas said the guns used in the commission of violent crimes in the Bahamas are not manufactured in his country but instead are manufactured abroad and illegally trafficked across the border. He said a critical element of the government's efforts to reduce violent crime in the country is cracking down on the proliferation of firearms, with particular focus on strengthening borders and entry points. And finally tonight, international news. The U.S. Central Bank has raised interest rates again, despite fears that the move could add to financial turmoil after a string of recent bank failures. The Federal Reserve increased its key rate by 0.25 percentage points and said more action could be appropriate as consumer prices continue to climb. The BBC reports that the Fed has been raising borrowing costs to try to slow the economy and ease pressures pushing up prices. But sharp rate rises have led to strains in the banking system. Two U.S. banks, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, collapsed this month, buckling in part due to problems caused by higher interest rates. But the authorities around the world have said they do not think the failures threaten widespread financial stability and need not distract from efforts to bring inflation under control. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.